Thank you for watching this video on Blueprint's cross-platform migration. In this video, we're going to show how Blueprint can migrate from Automation Anywhere version 11 to Blue Prism. In fact, Blueprint's able to reverse engineer processes not only from Automation Anywhere, but from other popular RPA platforms, including UiPath. Once reversed into Blueprint, it becomes what we call a digital Blueprint where you then have the opportunity to optimize or even transform the automation, discover reuse opportunities, even apply best practices before forward generating it to the destination, in this case, Blue Prism. Digital blueprints are visual representations of the process. They're extremely usable. They're designed to be collaboratively develop with a broad group of people, both technical and business stakeholders. They're also intended for use within large enterprises, so they take into account things like business rules, regulations, corporate policies, non-functional requirements. They have complete comprehensive versioning, workflow to take them through different gates and approvals, and online review and sign-off using electronic signature. But not only that, it's what you can do with digital blueprints that becomes quite special. From them, you can automatically generate user stories to drive implementation cycles that are agile. You can also automatically generate a complete set of functional and acceptance tests. If needed, these processes, along with their contextual information, like I said, dependent rules and policies and so on, can all be generated into formal documentation. And as mentioned, they integrate to most major development platform, RPA development, but even beyond into low-code, no-code, and even custom software development platforms. And they support RPA-specific attributes and details, like specific commands with their parameters and settings. In the case of Blue Prism, business objects. It supports multi-layered processes, handles exceptions, and will incorporate queues, schedules, credentials, and other details that are necessary for bot execution. So let's head into a demo, and after the demo, I'll show you a summary of a comparison that was run between migrating with Blueprint and it being done manually. So as I mentioned, we're going to start with Automation Anywhere version 11. Here's some ATMX files that I happen to have in V11. If I open this one, which is an exchange rate process, we can see the details of the process. Basically opens up a browser, goes to an exchange rate website, scrapes the rates, comes back, opens up Excel, and puts it into an Excel file and saves it off. So in Blueprint, you can see on the left-hand side, we already have some digital blueprints representing bot processes, and we're going to bring back that exchange rate one. So we can pull, again, from many, many sources, but I'm going to pull this one from Automation Anywhere. So for Automation Anywhere, I need to go into my Documents area where AA stores this information. And here's all the ATMX files, including the exchange rate. So it takes a moment to open that up, to parse the contents, pull it into Blueprint, and to create now this new digital Blueprint. So here it is, the exact same information that was in Automation Anywhere from beginning to end. And if we look at some of the detailed steps here, we can see all the detailed parameter information that was brought in for each and every one of those commands. In addition, as I mentioned, we can augment with the system responses. So for each of these steps or actions that's done by the automation, the systems respond. And of course, that's where we can apply the screenshots to literally see those system responses. Notice at the top of the system response, we identify the actual system because we know what it is. In this case, Internet Explorer, Windows, Excel on this one. So those systems are detected and they are created here. So for these systems, we can in reverse discover all the possible processes that happen to use that system, if that's something that's needed. Now, as mentioned, if we needed to alter this process to optimize or change it, it is a full editor, so we can begin to do that. Or if we want to add additional information, let's say on this step dealing with Excel, let's say we want to add an attachment, an Excel technical guide, for example. So that is now associated with that particular step for reference purposes. Let's say we're aware of a policy dealing with Internet Explorer. So when we go to launch the website with Explorer, what I can do on that particular step is associate that policy. I can do a quick search for it. 
So this live search will take me to that information and I can associate it or establish that dependency. We can get a little preview here. Of course, if I click it, I'll go to the full policy. Now, clearly I had to know that this policy existed, but let's say you didn't. You just want to find things that might apply. You would use Blueprint's Intelligent Recommendations. As the name implies, it recommends rules, policies, regulations that it feels might be applicable. In this case, there's an exchange remote regulation. Again, we can click and go explore, but let's say we did that and made the decision it does apply. We just click, hit the trace button, and now again we've established a linkage to that. So it's that easy to find and establish these enterprise dependencies so that nothing is missed. The other thing we can do with a digital blueprint, because we have all of this information, we can flip it into a visual storyboard. Literally take a walk through what that robot is going to do. So in this case, it's pulling the exchange rate from the website, opening up the Excel file. And as we move ahead, you can literally see the bot adding that particular exchange rate that it got to the table of rates. So that's an excellent way to communicate to others exactly what we need this automation to be doing, or for those who need to implement it, for them to understand what it is they're implementing. Another thing we can do with this blueprint is generate user stories automatically. So Blueprint takes all of that information in this structured model and can essentially translate it into a set of work items or user stories to drive an agile development cycle. These little icons that you see on every box is the user story. So there is a set of them essentially forming a backlog of stories. If I click it, it'll pop up, give me a little preview of what that story looks like. So it's always a well-formed user story. It comes with acceptance criteria in given when then format and shows me screens both before and after that work is done to show you visually what's expected. As mentioned, acceptance tests in the form of a Gherkin that can drive test automation, but also traditional functional tests covering every possible path through that process. So with all of that, we're going to pick up this digital blueprint, which consists of the process and all of its contextual information, and we're going to send it down to, in this case, Blue Prism. So you can see it was downloaded to Blue Prism. And then if we flip over to Blue Prism, we can see in the studio area, there's nothing to do with exchange rates here. We go to releases and basically import that VP release file that was just put into downloads. And that package has been now brought in. Over in studio, we can see the new exchange rate opening it up. Basically, that process is now here in the context of the standard templates that are prescribed by Blue Prism. So that information automatically provided to Blue Prism along with references or traces back to Blueprint. So for example, if I open up that note, you can see there's a link to Blueprint. Navigating to that link takes us right to that dependent regulation in this case. Or another one down here is actually a link back to an attachment. So taking that URL and navigating there, take us right to that step in the process you can see is highlighted and off to the right is the attachment that's being referenced. As mentioned earlier, we ran a comparison of using the blueprint conversion versus another individual doing it manually. And these are the results we got. Very dramatic savings overall from 731 down to 37 minutes. And to walk through quickly, instead of analyzing the V11 process in Automation Anywhere to try to figure out what it's doing, of course with Blueprint we're converting that over to Blue Prism. And at the Blue Prism end, you essentially are doing adjustments. 
determining related policies, the intelligent recommendations that I was showing you dramatically improves the ability to expose and surface de enterprise dependencies that would otherwise be missed. Developing the Blue Prism process manually now becomes, as I said, basically an adjustment activity, accounting for the things that didn't map over precisely. And when it comes to testing, as I showed you, Blueprint automatically generates the tests. And when it comes to performing testing, because they're automatically generated, they're always correct, they're always accurate, so there's no problem with the tests themselves. And there's no missed tests, making the whole testing activity far, far more efficient and focused on what it should be doing, which is validating the automation. So thank you very much for watching this video on Blueprint's cross-platform migration. If you'd like additional information, our website's at www.blueprintsys.com. That's blueprintsys.com. Or send us a direct message at info at blueprintsys.com.